Hi everyone, uh, let's get started here. Um, so after the presentation, we're going to have some time for uh, questions. So please hold back on the question until the end of the presentation. Hey everyone, uh, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. My name is John, one of the tech engineers here at LS Electric. Agenda for today are we will quickly go over VFDs that we offer and for the programming part we will mainly focus on the S100 since I believe once you get a good idea with the S100 keypad you should have no issues with, with uh, programming other drives. So to start off the uh, overview um, we will start with the M100. Uh, this is the uh, most compact drive that we offer. Some of the highlights of the M100 are uh, it has the uh, built-in EMC filter as standard. Uh, it's a C2 class. They are uh, thin rail mountable. We offer this in dedicated single phase only. Uh, the capacity uh, is from 0.5 horsepower to 3 horsepower. The input voltage uh, as of right now it's a two th 200 to 240 volt single phase. Uh, we are coming out with the 124, uh, 120 version pretty soon. Uh, and it has the uh, built-in potentiometer and it also meets the uh, new UL61800-5-1. These would be perfect for uh, small fans, pumps, and we have customers who have been using these on automatic gates, elevator doors, and even washing machines. The next drive is the G100. The G100 is a compact micro drive and it is, uh, I believe, our most competitive VFD offering. It is uh, perfect for basic pump and fan, conveyor, smaller, general, all-purpose industrial and commercial applications. We offer these in, in 230 volt and 480 volt. They are dual rated for heavy duty and normal duty. In heavy duty, the capacity range is from 0.5 to 10 horse. In normal duty, it is 1 to 15 horse. Communication options include a Modbus RTU as standard with optional dual port Ethernet IP, Profibus DP, and CAN open. The H100 is uh, our solution for HVAC and pump applications. The programming functions are heavily directed towards common requirements for various pump applications. It is rated at normal duty only in 230 volt and 480 volt. Uh, since it is directed at the uh, HVAC market, it comes with dedicated LCD keypad with hand-off auto control. And finally, uh, S100 and IS7. I have grouped these two drives together since they share a lot of similarities. One of the examples is that they share the same LCD keypad. Some of the differences are the capacity range. S100 goes up to 20 horsepower in 230 volt and 100 horsepower in 480 volt. Uh, IS7 in 230 volt, uh, it goes up to 100 horsepower. In 480, it goes up to 600 horse horsepower. IOs are also different. In uh, uh, S100, there are five digital inputs for the 30 horse and below models. 7 digital inputs for 30 horse and above, 2 analog inputs, 1 analog outputs for 30 and below, 2 analog outputs for 30 and above, 2 digital outputs for 30 and below, and 3 digital outputs for 30 horse and above models. 
uh, extended I.O. is available for both models. Uh, IS-7 has few more communication options and IS-7 is the only drive that has the encoder feedback ca capability. As for the NEMA rating, S100 is available in NEMA 4X platform. Uh, S100 and IS-7 are our most versatile drive. Uh, it has powerful sensorless control with wide range of user-friendly functions. Not just, now let's get into the programming part. All the programming in this uh, webinar is going to be done with the S100. The smaller S100, uh, 40 horse and below, uses an LED keypad similar to the G100, but the parameter structure is slightly different from the G100 to S100. Uh, at initial power up, 0, 0.00 is displayed. This is our monitor display. Pressing up and down will navigate through the operation groups. The left and right arrows navigate through the various parameter groups. The up and down arrows will navigate to various codes, parameters in each group. The enter key will enter in and out of parameters. Pressing enter two times will save a parameter change. The ESC key will escape to the previous display. Uh, let's look at how it's done on the keypad. So from here, if you press up, you're going to see ACC, acceleration, deceleration, uh, command source, FRQ is the operation frequency, or the frequency source, ST1 is the step speed 1 when using multi-step, ST2 and ST3, current this is the current display. RPM, you can enter in and out. DCL is the DC link voltage. VOL is the output voltage. NON, it displays the recent trip history. And DRC would be your motor direction. So up and down, it goes through this operation group. Pressing right or left, it goes through the uh, parameter groups, DR, BA, AD, CN, IN, OU. CM, AP, and finally uh, PR. So you could use a right or left arrow to shuffle through this uh, parameter groups. Uh, the motor parameters uh, should be uh, set at startup to ensure proper protection and efficient operation. So you would uh, have to use the uh, information off of the motor nameplate to input your uh, motor capacity, motor pulse, motor current, motor voltage, and finally the input voltage. So this is how you would do it on the S100. So by pressing right, you would go into DR14. Once you get to DR, you would press up, go to 14, press enter. Uh, it's set at 0.75 kilohertz, kilowatts. So you could uh, change it with your up and down arrow. So I'm just going to set this at 0.75. After that, you would go to BA11, so press your right arrow twice and then go up to BA11. 
press enter so it's set at 4 by default so 4 means it's um, 1800 rpm 2 would be uh, it would equal to um, 35 or 3600 rpm after that you would set your uh, current on PA13 After that, BA15 would be your uh, motor voltage. I'm going to set this at 240, 30. BA19 would be your actual input coming in. 240 here. Uh, the S100 and IS7 can be programmed to run off of two wire maintain switches or three wire momentary push buttons. So by default, it's configured to run with a two wire setup. So you don't have to change any parameter. You would just hook up your switch on P1 for uh, forward. Uh, if you need reverse, you would just simply uh, wire up a switch on P2. and you wouldn't have to do any parameter changes. You would just uh, switch on and off. It, it, it should run as long as you have inputted your um, speed. As for the three wire setup, you have only one parameter that you would have to change. That's the um, IN67 P3 define. And you would have to um, connect the normally closed stop button on P3 NCM. So, um, so IN67, you would put that to number 14, which would be three wire setup. So let's take a look at how it's done on the keypad. So you would make sure your DRV setting is at one. By default, it's at one. So. And you would simply uh, switch, close your contact on P1. It's going to run up to 60 hertz here. And when you um, open up that contact, it's going to slow down according to the decel time you set. And as for the three wire setup, um, you would have to change one parameter. So let's go into IN67. So by pressing right arrow, go to IN. Or you can press your left arrow. IN67. Press enter. Uh, make this uh, number 14. Press enter twice. So this is not a push button setup. I would have to first close P3 to make this uh, be able to operate in three wire setup. So as soon as your uh, P3 is closed, you should be able to um, simulate a three wire setup. So as long as that uh, switch is initiated, your P1 switch, it should run up to 60 hertz. Um, so you would only stop when you open up your normally closed stop. So as you see, no matter what you do with that P1 switch, um, only stop command is inputted. You can only um, input your stop, stop command through P3. Uh, 
uh, for 40 horse and larger S100s, uh, it includes an LCD keypad. This keypad can be ordered as an option for use on the smaller S100s. This uh, keypad is the same for the S uh, IS7, and it is included uh, standard on IS7 on most uh, stock. So on the LCD keypad, there is a lot of uh, buttons. So it has uh, directional buttons to navigate through different parameters, a program enter key to enter into a parameter, and a multi key. It can be programmed uh, for special functions, jog, local, remote, user group, uh, multi keypad, forward key, or when you uh, use your keypad to run your uh, VFD, which would be, uh, you would set your DRV620, which would be keypad. Uh, stop reset key, it stops the motor when it's uh, the DRV06 is uh, set to keypad, and it uh, also resets the uh, VFD trip. Uh, and then the reverse key, and mode key, it goes into uh, the parameters and let's look at how you would install the, this LCD keypad onto a smaller S100 so you would first uh, have to take off the cover so if you take off the cover you should see a uh, Ethernet port on the right side of the VFD. So you will simply plug that in. And after that, you should see uh, the keypad light up. So initially, when the keypad uh, lights up the first time, it will prompt you to put in the uh, basic motor nameplate uh, info. So it's called the uh, Start Easy Set. So when you get this uh, prompt, you would uh, simply select yes. It's going to prompt you for language, so I'm going to uh, do English. DRV14, your motor capacity. So this was actually a 0.4 kilowatt uh, model. So if you can see this, uh, it says D next to 0.4. That means a uh, default. So D C means a uh, current value, a uh, current parameter set. And uh, BAS uh, AS, uh, 15, uh, it's the rated volt. Uh, uh, I'm going to set this at 230. BAS 10, uh, it's going to prompt you to choose either 60 hertz or 50 hertz. So 60 hertz and then motor voltage. And finally, the command frequency, which I just set at 60. Uh, acceleration and deceleration times are commonly adjusted uh, per the application needs. Uh, for the smaller S100, the default uh, acceleration time is set to 5 seconds and decel to 10 seconds. Uh, the setting range is uh, from 0 to 600. Uh, for the larger S100s and uh, IS7s, uh, the, the excel time and decel time uh, it depends on the uh, drive capacity. So for example, a high speed drill has a low inertia and it needs to reach operating speed in a short time. So the excel and decel time would be set as short as possible. Uh, a fan on a rooftop unit has a large uh, inertial load so your XL and decel time needs to be higher so we would uh, typically set this at uh, 30 seconds or longer and we could also change the stop mode so parameter AD8 determines how the VFD will stop the motor when the run command is uh, removed So 0 would be your D cell time, 1 would be your DC break, 2 would be your free run, 3 would be your flux breaking, 4 would be your power breaking. 
So let's take a look at our AC here. AC time is 20 seconds. Uh, DAC D cell time was 30 seconds. And we would uh, change our stop mode by pressing right and go to going to AD8. Zero would be your deceleration time. One would be your DC brake. Uh, it injects DC current into the motor to stop it. Number two is the uh, free run to stop. It shuts off the VFD output and lets the uh, motor to coast to a stop. Number three is a flux braking, but on this version, it's not available. Number four is power braking. Uh, the VFD decelerates as fast as possible without causing an over voltage. So I'm just gonna put this at power braking to show you how quick it would stop. So the acceleration time um, was 20 seconds. So it's gonna take 20 seconds or 10 seconds to go about half the speed so as soon as i opened up the contact it stopped so power braking is pretty quick it's less than one second so for frequency command uh, you could um have a potentiometer or you could input a PLC uh, 0 to 10 signal to control speed. So in order to do that you would change um, DRV7 or FRQ setting on the S100 to number 2 which would be V1. Uh, and the terminal wiring for a potentiometer would be VR, V1 would be your wiper wire and CM. And same for the um, 4 to 20 milliamps, you would uh, uh, change um, FR9 or FRQ or DRV7 if you're using LCD keypad to number 5, which would correlate to I2. The terminal wiring would be I2 and CM. So if you need a 24, uh, you would uh, connect it to 24 and I2 and make sure your SW1 is set to I. So next exercise that we'll go over is the uh, multi-step frequency. Uh, multi-step frequency can be defined using digital inputs. You can set up to eight speeds. So first thing you would have to do is um, uh, change the step speeds. So step speeds, um, is in the operation group, so ST1 through ST3. And then after that, multi-step frequency four to seven is on BA53 to 56. And after changing those uh, frequencies, uh, you would go into IN67 through 69 and change those parameters to speed low, speed medium, and speed H. And you could also go into IN89 um, to have a delay time. So it, this is in milliseconds, not in seconds. So this is how you would uh, achieve this on the S100. So you would first go into the display monitor. So you would um, input your first speed here. So when you get a start command, you would um, run this drive at this speed. And then the second speed is gonna be your ST1. Here it's gonna be 10. 10 is a uh, default. ST2 is your uh, third speed. ST3 is 30. And we would go into BA group, so BA53.
you would set your speed here so 40 hertz 54 50 hertz 55 i'm gonna set this to 55 because we have one more speed step speed uh, remaining and you would set 56 to 60. And you would, if you need a, a delay time here, you would simply go into 89, IN 89. Or first, let's first do this, um, define the digital inputs. So IN 67 is your P3 defined. So it says OL here. So seven is already used up. So let's check which uh, digital inputs are using seven. So IN69 is using up 7, so I'm just going to simply change that to um, step speed uh, high, which would be number 9. I'm going to set IN68 uh, to 8, which would be step speed medium. And finally, I'm I can set our IN67 to number 7. And IN89 is going to be our delay time in milliseconds. So I'm just going to put 20 milliseconds here. Let's see. So first, if you um, start with your P1, you're going to run your VFD at 0.7. So Second uh, step speed you would achieve by um, um, closing P1 and P3 together. So it's going to ramp up to 10 seconds. So, and then the second step speed would be P1 and P4 together. Third step speed is going to be P1, P4, and P3. And then the fourth step speed is going to be P1 and P5 together. And then the next step speed is going to be P1, P5, and P3 together. And your um, seventh uh, step speed is going to be P1, P5, and P4, which would be 55. And finally, your last step speed is going to be P1, P3, P4, and P5. Uh, you can also set a speed lim limit uh, pretty easily. So you would simply go to AD24. You would set that to yes. After setting that to yes, you are going to see AD25 and AD26. AD25 is going to be your low lower speed limit, and AD26 is going to be your upper speed limit. So I would recommend getting an LCD keypad if it's possible. Uh, because LCD keypad can be used for backing up parameters and copying to other VFDs. So you would, if you need to copy uh, parameter sets and write onto another um, VFD, you could easily do it. So the steps are uh, here. So set CNF46 to yes. This uh, reads parameter from the drive and copies them onto the keypad. And you would uh, just take out the keypad from that drive and connect it to another drive and simply do CNF47, which would be parameter write. This puts the parameter stored in the keypad into the drive. Uh, other common uh, functions include uh, you could uh, enable auto reset. So you would uh, first set your CON or CN71 
to this um, dip switch configuration shown here so 0 1 0 0 so the second one to the left would be up and all the rest would be down and you would set a PR8 to be able to reset after a trip you would set that to number one and then number of retries would be um, the range would be 0 to 10 so you would set that on PR9 and auto start on power loss so in case of power loss uh, you if you want your drive to start automatically when the power is back you would simply set this uh, parameter AD10 to number 1 and for the factory default uh, or parameter initialize you would simply set um, DR93 to 1 and if you're using LCD keypad you would uh, go to CNF40 and set it to 1 for all groups or you could uh, choose groups uh, depending on the uh, what you need to reset so this is a uh, end of the webinar uh, thank you very much for your time um, if you have question on uh, this is time for your questions uh, or if you have a question in the future, you can contact me at johnlee at lselectricamerica.com.